while tiptoeing behind an assortment of musty pickling jars with rather questionable contents in Little Nightmares 2, the story of Little Red Riding Hood suddenly came to mind. My, what a long neck you have, I muttered as my foe, a gigantic school marm in properly prim attire, suddenly gave chase by extending her head toward my general direction. The better to eat you with, my dear. <laughs> It's just one of the many creepy scenes in a suspense adventure game that loves to manufacture misery by the minute. One moment you're casually climbing boxes and minding your own business, the next moment you're running for dear life through the woods while dodging shotgun fire from a ginormous hunter whose size 100 boots are just about as tall as you are. Then again, Little Nightmares 2 loves to lock you in seemingly unwinnable situations while throwing away the key. Ultimately, it's up to you to figure out the solution to its devious puzzles, or at least die trying. Now, the story of Little Nightmares 2 will be familiar to those who played the first game. Once again, you play the role of a trapped child who is looking to escape from a horrific cast of misfits. Let's just say that they are definitely up to no good. <laughs> the odds certainly don't appear to be stacked in your favor. Not only does new kid Mono look tiny and frail, the kid also sports a fashion sense that's eerily reminiscent of a Cleveland Browns fan who has given up. <laughs> Looks, however, can be deceiving. Like the brave girl Six who served as the protagonist of the first game, Mono quickly proves to be a scrappy survivor, the paper bag on his little head notwithstanding. Despite his singular sounding name, the good news is that Mono is not alone. By his side is a mysterious little girl who acts both as company and an indispensable ally as Mono navigates through the macabre world that he finds himself in. The mutually beneficial partnership introduces a new dynamic and some fresh mechanics in the sequel, including the ability to boost Mono up to higher areas or a vault over longer gaps. It also makes for some touching moments, particularly when you have both of them holding hands while navigating some particularly tricky sections of the game. I believe it's what the chic young girls of today call totes adorbs. <laughs> Interestingly, while having two characters makes Little Nightmares 2 feel less solitary, the game can still feel quite lonely. Like the first game, the sequel has a heavy and almost oppressive sense of melancholy that permeates through the entire experience. It's a testament to Tarsier Studios' attention to detail when it comes to setting the mood, and what a dim and dour mood it is. From its haunting soundtrack and use of an assortment of creepy sound effects, to its dark decaying visuals and disturbingly morbid enemies, Little Nightmares 2 is a masterclass in atmosphere and ambiance. It just does a really good job in evoking this lingering sense of discomfort and dread, that gnawing feeling in the back of your mind that something could and undoubtedly will go wrong at any time. Even the change in setting from the first game's large ship, the Maw, to the sequel's more land-based environs doesn't make you feel any less isolated or trapped. Just because you escape a house and make it outside in the open, for example, doesn't mean that you're safe. Like a Richard Mark song, trouble has a penchant for following you wherever you go and whatever you do. It'll be right there waiting for you. <laughs> Little Nightmares 2 also loves to dabble in some psychology. Fear can be a very personal thing, and the game constantly likes to pick, poke, and prod at any anxieties and phobias that you might have. To its credit, it does this organically as opposed to relying too much on cheap tricks and shortcuts such as jump scares. When scary or shocking things happen, they're usually preceded by a good amount of foreshadowing that builds up to that moment. This allows the dread to continuously percolate in your head as you slowly put together the pieces of what you might face while sometimes adding to your own imagined horrors. It's certainly a more polished approach than solely relying on random scares that seemingly just come out of nowhere. Not that the game doesn't have any issues. While it does a good job in employing contrast between light and shadow to great effect, portions of the game can literally be too dark to see. This can make certain parts frustrating as you fumble around while trying to find something or attempting to navigate a certain point in your adventure where you can't quite make out what's going on even with the brightness bumped up. The fact that the protagonists are children dealing with horrific and positively unchildlike things and sometimes reacting to that in violent fashion, will also make some folks uncomfortable. Little Nightmares 2 goes for a certain disturbing vibe and does it quite well. Perhaps too well. Now playing Little Nightmares 2 essentially boils down to two things. Trial and error. A mix of Prince of Persia style platforming combined with stealth and old school puzzle based adventuring, Little Nightmares experience often involves hitting various roadblocks and figuring out how to surmount or, more importantly, survive them. Fortunately, Mono has several moves at his disposal that would make Mick Jagger proud. In addition to platforming staples such as running, jumping, and climbing, you can also interact with various parts of your environment that are essential to solving the various conundrums that the game likes to throw your way. It especially loves to lay traps in seemingly harmless places that make you let your guard down, only to find yourself swallowed or crushed by something unexpected. The good news is that the game is designed quite intuitively. 
I found myself instinctively doing things like using a stick to set off bear traps, or jumping up and down repeatedly on an obstacle to send it crashing through a lower floor to open up a new path. Your partner will also provide clues at times about certain actions that you need to take in order to move forward. Figuring out the game's various puzzles is one of the fun parts of playing Little Nightmares 2. Granted, it can get frustrating when you get stuck. The game, however, typically gives you just enough clues in its environs to let you figure things out, which makes solving them feel rewarding once the light bulb finally turns on inside your brain. Little Nightmares 2 also likes to sprinkle hidden items such as new hats, as well as shadowy figures known as glitching remains within its various nooks and crannies, encouraging players to further explore its spooky environs. For the most part, discretion is the better part of valor, and Mono's best bet is to usually run away from opponents. There will be times, however, when he needs to take a stand and fight for his life. This often occurs in sections where you find items like a hammer on the floor, a telltale sign that a fight is likely coming your way. As a little child, however, Mono is not the most skilled fighter out there. In fact, he is actually quite the awkward little bean sprout. His slow wind-up and equally slow recovery, for example, means that you pretty much have to make sure that every shot you make counts because missing basically means a one-way trip to paper bag heaven. If you're used to mashing buttons with your action games, you'll definitely need to be a bit more disciplined in Little Nightmares 2 in order to survive its occasional skirmishes. When platforming and combat works, though, the game is quite a delight. It's almost like playing a well-done quick-time sequence, but without the quick-time prompts, if that makes any sense. It certainly feels more interactive and rewarding when compared to simply pressing button prompts that pop up on the screen. In a sense, it makes you feel more like an active participant in the action, as opposed to being a detached bystander. Although certain actions are purposefully delayed to add tension, however, there are times when the controls can feel unresponsive. This can be frustrating in sequences where Mono needs to alternate between stopping to hide behind a box and running to escape, for example, but ends up walking instead because you're slightly off with your analog stick placement or timing when switching actions. Aiming Mono's attacks can also be a bit cumbersome, which is particularly annoying when dealing with multiple feral school brats that try to bully and jump you. <laughs> Talk about the real nightmares in this game. Also, while checkpoints are typically well placed, there are a few that send you back a little further than warranted, requiring you to repeat certain sequences that can be a pain in the posterior. If it happens to be a particularly challenging sequence, it's like a veritable Groundhog Day of death, dying, and passing away. Despite such quibbles, the gameplay in Little Nightmares 2 is quite solid overall. If anything, it will make you appreciate the finer nuances of the lost art of throwing a shoe at something. Or someone. <laughs> hey, it could very well save your life, or at least open some doors for you. So what are my final thoughts on Little Nightmares 2? Well, Franklin Roosevelt once famously said that we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Then again, he was never chased by the oversized head of a giant school marm with a serpentine neck inside an air vent. It's just one example of the many surprises that Little Nightmares 2 has in store for players who wander into its bizarre and melancholic world. If you love creepy adventure thrillers with puzzle platforming to boot, this is one nightmare you'd want to tuck into. As always, if you have any thoughts or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. Once again, this is Tommy Asobi, and thank you for watching.